Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and welcome to my channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation plans. We compare the IMOs, and as always, the standard here is I supply third party documentation when I have it to you so you can make the ultimate decision of where you feel like you're going to do best and succeed in this industry. For those of you who have been here before, you already know that. For those of you who are brand new, welcome to my channel. This week, the video is about what we do as agents and how to best describe that in the home. I call it protecting the middle. So let's get started. Now, the opinions on these videos are mine. They're not my IMOs, they're mine. They come from opinions generated over the years in this industry, making a lot of bad decisions, seeing things that they really are once in an IMO, and what the truth is about trying to get out of an IMO once you decided it's time to move on. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what we do. I'm going to share with you an experience I had just last week in a home and how I presented their options when they asked me, how much coverage do you think I should buy? And I call it protecting the middle. It really is a tip that I want to share with you that I use in the home to explain what we're trying to cover and why. Now listen, when I get in the home, I completely understand people buy from people they like, know, and trust. That means you're gonna to have to spend a little more time with them than 15 minutes going in there and dropping race like you're selling cars or a vacuum cleaner, right? I'm going to attempt to build that relationship in the first few minutes that I'm in that home. Now, funny story, last week I met with this couple and he was not happy at all that I was there when I pulled up. It was a very, very remote area, very dark, mountain kind of home. And I can see off in the distance that he was just getting home from work and he was in the garage doing what most men love and that was tinkering on something in the garage. The last thing he wanted to see, and I could feel it, was a life insurance salesman. Anyway, when she finally got him in the home, it was obvious that he wanted nothing to do with what I was selling. I laughed and just said, I can tell you don't want to be here. Now I'm gonna leave names out of this video. I laughed and just said, Jack, listen, I can tell you don't want to be here, and I fully understand that. And as I was having that very light exchange with him, again, like, know, and trust, trying to get him to like me, you could visibly see that he was coming around. Why? Because I demonstrated that I was completely on his side. But as I said to him, I said, listen, Jack, the last thing on most people's mind is buying life insurance. People don't sit around and say, hey, honey, let's go get some life insurance. Rarely happens. Why? Because all of us have much more tangible things that we could do with our money. Buy a new car, take a vacation, almost anything. People don't buy life insurance. They buy what life insurance does, right? You've heard me say that before. So I get that, Jack, but if I asked you, hey, listen, do you want to make sure your kids who are sitting in the other room can keep their home, go to college, keep all their dreams intact? And before I could finish, guess what? He said he was standing at the refrigerator, and he turned to me and goes, of course. And I said, exactly. This meeting tonight is not about you and I, Jack. It's about them. We buy life insurance for them, not us, because we will be gone when it affects their life in a positive way, right? It's a non-tangible item because, yes, I get that, and moved over closer to the table and finally had a smile on his face and was engaged in the conversation. Remember, folks, our number one job is to slow down, have a conversation with these people, tell the stories that they can relate to, and remind them why they buy a non-tangible product that will never have an impact on them. It's because of who we love and who we leave behind. And it's our job as agents to remind them of that and have that conversation in a non-pressuring, non-threatening manner. So let's move on to the meat of this video. When I'm in the discussion of options, coverage, and rates, when I am sitting with a couple, I always tell them, depending on their budget, my recommendation is buy as much as you can for as long as you can. This stuff does not get any cheaper. So when we get to the coverage options, I draw this out on paper to make clear exactly what we're trying to accomplish with this death benefit. So let's go to the board and let me draw this out. I just turn the lead sheet over is all I do, folks. And I draw what looks like a humpback camel, right? Much like this. Okay? And I explain to them when we're very young, we don't really have any use for life insurance. Right? But as we get married, okay? 
We get a mortgage. We have kids. Okay? They have we have grandkids. And of course we have college. Now college funding could be for your kids and your grandkids, right? And then after all of these things, then we have this area, which is as we, as we get past all of these things, we take care of all these things. The kids are in college. The grandkids are heading to college, right? Maybe the mortgage is paid off. Our focus tends to shift more to retirement, right? And now we're going to have more of a final expense, right, conversation, and possibly an inheritance conversation. Leave a little bit behind, not just covering final expenses, but maybe a little bit leaving a little bit behind for the kids, the spouse, the grandkids, that type of thing. And I find this to really be helpful in the home. And I said, Jack and Jill, what we're here tonight to discuss is protecting the middle. Because if something happens to you, Jack, right now, the mortgage is in jeopardy, the kids may not be able to go to college, you may have the college funding for the grandkids, all these things are put at risk. Right? Because you have so much responsibility in the middle part of our lives that that's the part that if something were to happen to you, that these things dramatically are affected and lives can be changed and dreams are lost. So, what we want to focus on in terms of your coverage is protecting these folks. Now, I have a video up there called The Law of Decreasing Responsibilities. It goes into this deeper, but I find this to be a very quick, useful example to use in the home. And I would say, once we get past all these things, then we can start having a conversation about final expense. And if you get a high death benefit in this area to cover all these things, you can start shifting that, lowering the death benefit, and going more into a, a permanent insurance option. Because typically speaking, when we're talking about mortgage section, this is a term product that's going to term out right around 70, 80 years old, right? And you want to kind of shift now to a final expense. Now, what else is our job besides having that conversation with them? Our job, again, like I said, is like, know, and trust and tell stories that they can relate to. When I got through all this, she goes, you're not going to be happy about this, Steve, but we just started our research, and I really want to check around and do my due diligence. And here's what I told them. I said, hey, listen, I completely understand. I get that. All I'm going to say is this. There's no contract to life insurance. You don't pay, you don't get the coverage. They cancel you. But here's what I can tell you from a personal experience. I've been doing this over 30 years, and this stuff matters. And no one, Jack, Jill, can promise you tomorrow. No one knows if you'll live tomorrow or you'll drop dead of a heart attack or be killed in a car accident. And tonight, with an application, I can assure you that while you're checking around, while you're doing your due diligence, you're covered and you're not putting your family at risk. Now, Jack and Jill, I've been on both sides of this. I had a single woman that was fairly resistant to meeting with me a couple of years ago. I went to her house two times and I got porched. In this industry, porch means I got stood up, right? And she was not home. But the third appointment she kept, she had a young son. I wrote a policy on her. The next day I called back to the house because I needed an additional piece of information. Her dad answered the phone. And what I heard at that moment was devastating. He told me that she was killed an hour after I left the night before when going to the grocery store for milk, she was killed in a car accident. And her dad was so relieved when I told him that she had completed an application with me the night before and the insurance company would proceed. And as long as they would have covered her, her son will receive the death benefit. And he was so grateful. He said, thank you. Without that money, we won't be able to send him to college. It will also help us with the cost of raising him as she would want. In that case, it was so important that I was persistent and kept rescheduling the appointment. So as agents, when you're making those styles, you're getting that pushback, you're getting some rejection, remember, they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what you know. They look at this as buying a car, a vacuum cleaner, and a non-tangible item that really, again, they have better things to do with their money because they're alive today. Everybody's going to live forever, and they aren't focusing on what matters if they don't. And I continue to tell them, Jack and Jill, unfortunately, I have also been on the other side. Last December 2018, I had an appointment with a couple 
When I arrived at the door, I could tell there was a party going on. I could hear the football game being played, and she came to the door and said, hey, Steve, our son is home from college break, and he and his dad are watching the football game, and he's just not willing to come to the table and sit down. Can you follow up, and let's get back together again right after the first of the year? And that was about middle of December. So we're talking about, folks, four weeks away. I called her in January, and she started crying on the phone, and she said, Steve, I have some bad news. I was diagnosed with stage four cancer last week. My family and I am, are devastated. I wish we had met with you now. I just never imagined I would be in this place. You see, folks, our job as agents is to be passionate, not pushy. Tell the stories that people can relate to. People understand that they can't control tomorrow, and they can relate to those stories that put themselves in that position and realize how emotional and how hurtful that would be if they allowed that to happen to their family. That's our job. You don't have to be pushy. Just tell the stories. Tell them in a way that they can relate to it. And we do our best to leave that home with their families protected. The best tip I can give you today is don't overcomplicate this. Product knowledge is not the most important thing. Look, all these carriers have brochures. Get them, take them with you, and just read the brochure. It's not complicated. But your biggest job is to tell the stories and be passionate about what we do and why it is important to them. Don't have commission breath. Don't put yourself in a poor financial situation where you're desperate to make a sale. It comes out in your presentation, trust me. They can sense that you're there to make money and not necessarily to help them protect their families. Money does not flow to desperate people, folks. The spirit of what's in your heart and your interest will come out in your demeanor. And if you're focusing on your car payment being passed due, you're dead in the water. So I hope this helps. I love sharing these things with you. And I hope it impacts you. I hope it changes uh, your attitude about what we do. It's not just about the money. Look, we all need to make money. We can all make very, very, very good money in this industry. We get paid so well, it ought to be illegal. It's not. But you got to remember, if money is, is your focus, you're dead in the water. Put them first. Tell the stories. Be passionate. Don't focus on product knowledge. Read this thinking brochure and go out there and sit down and just have conversations with these people. And as always, I always end my videos with this. Remember, the surest way to succeed is to be determined to never, ever quit. You got to be willing to fail. You got to be willing to be bad before you're good. But failing cannot be an option. No plan B. Focus on plan A and go out there and, and succeed in this incredible business. My contact information is in the description. You got my phone, you got my email. Text me, email me, or call me if I can be any help to you. Go out there and protect some families. Grateful that you're here. Thank you for your support. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.